Good evening, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about the Israel-Arab conf conflict or the Israel so-called Palestinian conflict. As we know, it's the 15th of uh, May today and again the Hamas is sending barrages of rockets into Israel and as usual the left is now again crying about dead Palestinian children which Hamas is basically using as arrow fodder. Uh, they are using them as, uh, them as uh, human shields. They are... just think about this. Think about Israel doing the same thing. Think about Israel using, placing their children in arms way in areas where they are know there might be an attack to deter Hamas from dropping bombs. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, that would help. Now, how come is it that Hamas is using their own population as human shields? It is because they love their own children? Is it because they care about the death of their own children? Is it because they are peace-loving honest citizens of the world? Is it because their ideology is so peaceful? Is it really because they are entrapped in, in uh, Gaza and don't have any, any other ways to express their anger? Are they really in an apartheid situation? Are they really blockaded by Israel? The answer is no. You know, Gaza has a long border to Egypt, okay? So why can't Egypt, why can't they get their stuff from Egypt? It's almost like, you know, almost like second, the Second World War. We are bombing Germany, or trying to weaken Germany. And Germany are bombing and waging war and killing people all over the place. And... They are simultaneously wanting us to support their war machine by sending in food and infrastructure and building materials. That is just ridiculous. Why should Israel send in anything to Gaza? They are actually doing business with, with uh, the West Bank with the Palestinian in the West Bank. Even the Palestinians in the West Bank are sick of the Palestinians in Gaza. Egypt is sick of them. The Arab states are sick of them. They are tired of this conflict. And you can actually see it because they were now, during, uh, during Trump's presidency, they were starting to make peace with Israel. Now this is maybe falling apart because of, uh, of Biden. Biden is basically uh, senile. He, he clearly doesn't know what he's doing. But anyway, and now because of Biden's weakness, Hamas, which again got a lot of money from the American state, have built up all these, all these uh, rockets, uh, uh, gotten their rockets back and now are shooting quietly into Israel. And then they complain that Israel shoots back and people die. It is just not fair. The left has gone crazy. There have been demonstrations in Oslo against for dead Palestinian children. For some reason, and this is this is strange, you know, this has to do with empathy in contrast to sympathy. I have sympathy for all people in the world who are suffering. I do not have much empathy for people I don't know because I don't know them. So my emotions are quite equal for everyone who is suffering. I mean, we are losing 28,000 children a day for the lack of food and medicine. So if it, if, it, if it is about children, I can point to other places in the world where children are suffering 50 times worse than in Gaza. 
And by the way, people in Gaza aren't starving to death. And if they do, it is not because of the Jews or Israel, it's because of Hamas. Because Hamas is a fascist organization, a religious, fascist, jihadist, Islamist organization who don't give a rat's ass about their own population. They are following the, the ideology of the Quran and the Hadith. And the Hadith and the Quran are saying plainly and simply that you can never, ever, ever give away land to the Kufar or to the unbeliever. You can't, and especially the Jews. I mean, if you're going to find... I have the Quran here somewhere. Yeah, but okay, you can put that aside. If you read the Quran, there is basically Jew hatred on every single page in that book. Every single... There are more Jew hatred in the Quran than in the whole, Mein, whole of Mein Kampf. Okay? So if you, th if you wonder where Hamas is getting this from... It is actually the Quran and the Hadith. So to, to believe that you can make peace with people who want to murder you, who aren't even allowed to make peace, according to Islamist scripture, the only thing a Muslim is allowed to do is to make uh, not a peace agreement, but a um, ceasefire. For up to seven years, seven years, I think it's within the frame of seven years. After that, he has to pick up the arms again because he, he is ordered to, to uh, conquer the world for Islam. And for Hamas, this has nothing to do with the region. You know, there was actually an ethnic cleansing in Gaza and it was done by... The Jews themselves. They moved every Jew out of Gaza and gave the Palestinians or the Palestinians in, in Gaza all the infrastructure. They gave them buildings, they gave them building material, they gave them machines, they gave them technology, they gave them, them uh, uh, agri agriculture, they gave them, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, these houses, glass houses, you make things grow in. Um, yeah, you know what I mean. They gave them everything. And what did they do with it? Did they say, ah, oh, wow, we can use this to, to strengthen our new state and give food to our population? No, they burned it all down because it was from the Jews. That is what they did with the resources they got from Israel. I was here, I was so happy many, many years ago when they were doing the Oslo Accords and the peace process because I felt really good about that. You know, peace is a good thing, okay? And then I saw how it deteriorated, how the Hamas and these alkalites, the, the, the hardcore Islamists, were blowing up bombs in the middle of Tel Aviv and in, in other places in, in uh, Israel. And they basically blew the peace agreement to pieces. Why did they do that? Was it because a little piece of land somewhere? Do you, do you know that how big, how a big part of the world, or the Arab world, Israel actually is? It is basically one ten, tenth of a one percent or something of Arab land, or what used to be Arab land. It is basically nothing. And there's not even any oil there. It's a desert that the Jews actually managed to grow because they are really good with... Their, their culture is made for progress, okay? That is probably also why they have survived being slaughtered for 2,000 years and survived all this. Now, there are many, many reasons why I support Israel. One of the reasons is also Israel is the only democratic state in that region. It's the only place Arab, Arab women, women actually have rights. It's the only place. In all the other places, women are basically house uh, breeding machines, basically. 
and uh, and children have the freedom and everything and uh, they have the same rights as as Israelis they have the same uh, protection as the Israelis and it is funny to see when the so-called Palestinian parts were erected now the Israeli Arabs didn't move to the Palestinian there's nobody moving into Gaza okay for some reason but anyway uh, I support Israel because I was wrong I was arguing about this conflict with my father for years because I used to be on the left and I have called Israel a apartheid state I have called uh, I've actually said this I, th I, I have called the Israelis Nazis I used to believe in that nonsense I used to be that stupid and I was arguing with my father about these things and after arguing a lot I started to study facts and I realized that I was wrong so I picked up the phone I called my father and I said I was wrong and I've been supporting Israel since that time as probably 15 20 years ago I even lost friends because of it because I was so ingrained on the left and when I started to support Israel and I started to become more pro-America and um, saw that America wasn't really the problem so that the Israelis wasn't really the problem I lost a lot of friends on the, on the, on the left and as an atheist and an anti nationalist because I'm not a nationalist I'm not for any states I don't want states in the world what I would like to see is the Carl Sagan world I would like to see the whole world as a big spaceship where we are doing common cause to create a secure future for the whole of humanity that is what I want to see but when it comes down to the Jews is that one I think the Jews and maybe the Kurds are the two people in the world that really really need special protection it's not because they need want it so much some of them do probably but it is because they aren't even allowed not to be it especially the Jews they aren't even allowed not to be Jewish I mean Stalin had a plan to kill every Jew in Russia or in, in the Soviet Union this plan was first to hang the intelligentsia of the Jewish population uh, on the Red Square in 1953 and then send the rest of the pop Jewish population to the borders with, uh, with China and basically starve them to death and we know that Stalin was very good at starving people to death in three months he starved seven million Ukrainians to death okay so he was actually good at that luckily he died in 1950 so he wasn't able to or about 1950 I'm not really sure it was not, yeah right before he was actually putting this into to uh, to action he died so Khrushchev stopped it happily uh, but the Jews have been uh, prosecuted in uh, by the there was uh, they were slaughtered by the Romans okay they did a rebellion against the Romans and the Romans were known for slaughtering people who rebelled so maybe that they have something to blame there but anyway and they were slaughtered by the Christians they are prosecuted by the Christians because of um, you know they they took the blood of Christ down to all future uh, future uh, uh, generations you know anti-semitism comes from Christianity then it was adopted by and and made even worse by uh, Islam and of course all the way up to basically the end of the Second World War anti-semitism was kosher you know it was it was it was the general view of the Jew that there was a problem it was actually the the Shoah or the the, the Holocaust who 
gave the Jews, finally gave the Jews some rights in the world. And of course it also gave them Israel and the state of Israel, which they basically already had bought from Arabian uh, uh, landowners and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and there lived a lot, hundreds of thousands of Jews there from before. So, and of course, Israel is also a historical fact. It is actually a country. It used to be a country, it used to be an identity. Anyway, 1948, Israel comes into existence. All the Arab countries attacks Israel. The idea, when they was asked, what, what are you going to do with the Jews? They just replied, well, there won't be a problem because there won't be any Jews. And the, even before, during the Second World War, Stalin, now Hitler and the Mufti, the so-called Palestinian Mufti, uh, or the Arab Mufti in that area, was living in Germany and making a plan with Hitler to kill all the Jews in that region if Hitler won the war. That was the plan. So, and of course, um, uh, before that, you know, there was the Ottoman Empire who ruled uh, that area. There wasn't any Palestinians or Palestinian state. Then the English took over. They call it Palestine because of the old uh, word that the Romans used on it when they conquered or destroyed Israel. They called it Philistine, Palestine, because of some tribes and there were enemies of Israel and stuff but it's a long story you can check it out yourself and uh, the English used that word for that region so actually it was the English that kind of created the idea of Palestine but even even Palestine was was um, uh, 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 in the crossfire of, of the of the Arabs because the region, the Palestinian post, there was even a newspaper there. The, the Palestine, Palestine, as they call it then, was actually a Jewish, kind of Jewish state. Even before that, that was actually called Palestine. Or a Palestine or something like that. But anyway, 48, they get the state, they are attacked by all the Arab states. And with the goal, annihilating the Jews and Israel. Once and for all, they lost, and the Jews got some more land from winning that war, which is totally fair. I mean, if you are attacked and you win, if you attack people you and you lose, you should lose your house. That is my opinion. And uh, again, they attacked again in 1967, the same thing, going to annihilate Israel and throw them into the sea. And they lost again, and they lost even more land. And then they attacked again in 1973. And then Syria, of course, lost the Golan Heights, and um, and uh, Egypt lost the whole Sinai Desert, which they got back if they went into a peace agreement with Israel, which they did. And uh, because of this, this is the misinformation the left has. That is the misinformation, I believe. I believed, I was th thought by someone, that it was Israel that was the aggressor every time. And when I studied, I realized that Israel was never the aggressor. That was never the main... Uh, Israel didn't want war. They want peace. It's a small region. It is a small country. It is a small population. So, they have never won the war. But at this point, they have to. I mean, again, Hamas, you see that again and again. Was it 2005? Then it was 2008. And then again a few years ago. And now again, Hamas is sending in this. And it's just time, for, the way I see it, it's just time for Israel to go in, maybe bring with them Egypt and Jordan and uh, West Bank Palestinians and just annihilate Hamas once and for all. 
just make make them go away just 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 redo the whole thing okay because as we know Hamas slaughtered the PLO and Fatah members in Gaza during the so-called uh, short civil war they had you know there was even a civil war within the Palestinians because Hamas didn't think PLO was hardcore enough and that was also one of the reasons why why Yasser Arafat didn't didn't go with a peace agreement that they could have gotten in Camp David where the Jews basically gave them everything but the problem was in Jerusalem if I uh, Yasser Arafat was afraid that he was going to get killed if he come with concessions about Jerusalem so that is why it fell apart and uh, This, this debacle will never end as long as you have militant Islamists ruling Gaza. It will never end until the Arabs realize that Allah is out to lunch and if they don't come in with a, to the peace table now and peace agreement, they will lose everything forever uh, that is what will happen they will lose everything there won't be any Palestinian state anymore and honestly at this point with so much blood that Israel has been wasting on this conflict since 1948 and even before that I don't think it's a good idea to give away more land. I think they should just annex as much as they can. And there is enough Arab land in the region to support all Arab states, all Arabs. The Palestinians doesn't even exist. There are Arabs living in a region they now call Palestine. And there is no real Palestinian identity. There is no, not a real Palestinian people. So maybe it's just time to cut out the bullshit and um, call it a day and just clean up. That is, if I could give the Jewish people or Jewish state a uh, suggestion, do a clean sweep. Okay? I mean, Israel is really trying not to kill civilians but it is impossible not to kill civilians if you are going to wage a war Hamas people don't care about this at all they only care about their ideology the Quran is clear on this you can't give land to the Kufar or to the unbeliever especially to the Jew so they will never they will never ever ever go in for a peace deal with Israel. There is just no fucking way. It will not happen. Okay? It will never happen. The problem I see now is you have this, this, on the left, the leftists and these people, oh, I got children, oh, it's so sad, the dead but still you children. It is, it is, I don't believe them. I don't believe you. You don't care about children. It's not about children. It is about your petty emotions that you have directed against a tiny piece of shit in a sea of shit. Okay? I mean, on a global scale, this conflict is nothing. It is nothing. It's not even worth our attention it's such a little, little piece of land which so few people and it would be so easy to fix it that we shouldn't even we shouldn't even talk about it but the left keeps pushing it Norway is giving money to Hamas money money we have given so much money to these jihadists the last 20 30 years 
that we have rebuilt Gaza and, and stuff several times just for them to s start sending rockets being destroyed again uh, and the left is is constantly calling the palace or the Gaza Palestinians the victims which they are not okay they are not victims of Israel they are victims of their own ideology. They are victims of their own so-called identity. They are victims of Hamas, who will never do priests. They are victims of people who are willing to sacrifice their own children for Allah. That is the problem here. And until the governments in the West and the people on the left realize this, there will never be peace. What we have to do to make peace there is to tell the Gaza Palestinians that you won't get any more help. The only way for you to get your state now is to make peace. And to make peace, as I say, you have to remove Hamas. So, now you also have the, the craziness with Iran. Iran is supporting um, the um, Hamas, despite Hamas being Sunni and Iran being Shia. And it's quite funny, really, because they have been fighting each other for 1400 years, but they have a common enemy, which is worse, of course, and that is uh, the Jews and America. Um, we also mustn't let uh, Iran get nuclear weapons. Just think about this. Iran gets nuclear weapons. They give nuclear weapons to the Gaza Palestinians or to Hamas. What do you think will happen? Do you think uh, uh, Hamas will care if uh, Israel retaliates with a nuclear bomb? or with, with the full force, if they blow a bomb and... You know, Israel is such, such a small country. J j one, one nuclear bomb will make a lot of havoc because it's such a small country. Anyway, I support Israel. Israel and, Israel and the Jews also is basically... They, they stand for up to 70% of all progress within science. How much science have Islam given to the world? Basically nothing. They took care of some of the classic science up to 1100 and saved some of from Christian burning and stuff like that. So we owe them that. But despite this, and that number, numeral system comes from India. So it's not really it wasn't invented by, by Arabs either. Uh, if there was one people, because of the amount of intelligence, and, and probably, I mean, the Jewish population probably became more and more intelligent because you had the selection for intelligence. If you were a useful Jewish person in in Europe, which prosecuted the Jewish population, you could survive and get children. So I think there has been an accumulation of genes, which has made them a tiny bit more, in general, smarter than the rest of the population in the world. But then again, there's so much inmixing and inbreeding and from all over the... I mean, there's... Is there really a Jewish people? Is there, is race really, is race really true? Does it exist? No. There is no race on the planet. There is no real, real uh, racial identity. But Israel needs super protection because they will also always be seen as other and be murdered every time something seems to go wrong or get blamed for it. So I support Israel 
and hope that you will do the same now. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for watching the video. If you are here at the end, I guess you are more interested than most. And uh, I just want to say something to uh, the haters out there. Uh, I don't give a shit. Okay. Personally, I don't care. I don't care what you call me. I don't care about name calling. I just find it ironic that people think that uh, kind of throwing out a lot of bullshit actually makes them seem more intelligent. Is that it? Uh, you are not. So if you want to be an asshole, please do. If you want to argue with facts, I'm ready to go, ready to rumble. I just wanted to say that in the end of this video. Um, hope you can give a thumbs up, leave a comment. Also hate, that's good, it's fine. Uh, and I hope you can go to my other channels and watch me paint, or even go to my Patreon and maybe support my channels and my work. There's more coming out, more videos about Covid, about uh, George Floyd, about all kinds of stuff. So please give a thumbs up and I see you in the next video. Yay!